more real. <laughs> And what, what do you think of all this uh, is this demonstration? Well, I think it's a, it's a good thing, you know, because uh, uh, black people, you know, we've been oppressed and undermined for a long time. And uh, for the first time, because of the internet, you know, now we have a platform where we can express ourselves and, uh, and talk about how we feel. So this is why I'm, uh, I'm here today, to take a stand, you know, against oppression against black people that has been going on for, for, for so many years. Right, and what would you like changed? Well, basically what we want is a equality and justice. Because we're all one as a family, it's one human family. So it doesn't matter whether you're black, you're white, whether you're Chinese, we just all have to treat each other with love and respect. This, this, is, what is, this is what is important. So this is what we, we are, we're asking for, fairness in the, in the economic arena fairness in all sectors of life just to treat each other nice and treat each, each other equal so this this fairness and this moral compassion uh, would this also be applied to non-human animals or is it exclusive to human animals i think it goes to all, all living things be the animals or human beings we, we have to treat each other fair so so you don't support the oppression of of non-human animals no no i don't I don't. Are you a vegan? I'm, 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 I'm not a vegan, but um, I mean, I try to, to eat right and make a balance. Um, I'm now informing myself about, you know, how it is with uh, how animals are treated and how animals are being farmed. This is something that most of us haven't known for years. But now, due to the, you know, the Internet, you know, there's a lot of people who are educating us. So it's also a change that I'm also trying to make gradually in my life. So, uh, and I think it's, 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 it's a step in the right direction. Because yeah. I feel that's where you can really see what humans are really made of. Because uh, if you oppress uh, black people, at least they have a voice. They will speak up about it. But when we oppress animals, they are still voiceless. So we only see, we only see it from the, uh, from the oppressor. And it's up to the oppressor to decide when enough is enough. Right, yeah. and uh, and that's why I'm asking, like, uh, like, shouldn't we treat all animals equally, even though they don't have a voice? Yeah, like I said, we, we should, we should, because I think it's a uh, there's one uh, spirit or energy or whatever you want to call it that is behind uh, everything, and this is something that uh, African spirituality is, is always been about. That is always one source of energy behind all living things whether that it be tree or animals, is the same energy force that is controlling the whole universe. So we always have to respect this energy. And it doesn't matter whether it's animals or your fellow human beings, we have to treat each other with love, infinite love. This is what is important, yeah. So w would you say that uh, we should be vegan, that it's, it should be our obligated right to be vegan? Yeah, I think, I, th I think it's a good thing. And I, I see the world is hurting more and more to, uh, in this direction. And I think that's the right thing to do. Because uh, now if, if you take a look about how, uh, if you see how animals are being farmed and they're using all these chemicals and, you know, we're eating it. And this is why a lot of people are getting sick, people are getting cancer, people are getting all diseases that never existed maybe 200, 300 years ago. So I think in the long run, it's, it's a step in the right direction to... Uh, be more focused on plants, plant-based diets, and um, I know you know a lot of us. We've been uh, brought up, you know, eating meat and stuff. So you can change overnight, but once you're conscious of the situation, you gradually. Uh, why, why can't you change overnight? I think it's a matter of, uh, I mean, discipline because you know people want to enjoy you know the food that they've been brought up with, and it's. Um, but if we agree that it's unethical, just like oppressing black people or any ethnic race is unethical, then we just stop. 
it's not like we don't progress out of it we just stop immediately wouldn't that be the right thing to do yeah, yeah I, I think it's, it's it's the right thing but sometimes it's also easy to say that you have to stop but there's also all these forces and uh, all the different things that it makes it hard for, for for people to stop so i mean i believe in change but sometimes change also needs to come uh, gradually you know it, it it takes time to uh, to build a character so what are you personally waiting on before you will stop uh, uh, oppressing animals, which is really what it is if, if you consume meat, right? Well, I, I mean, I think this is... Um, I'm not directly connected to, uh, I mean, raising these animals and eating. I know I still e eat it and it might not be right, but um, um, I don't think I will press animals. I think it's, it's, it's a strong way to, to say it. You think it's a strong word to say? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't feel this way about it. Okay, so if, if you say, if, if you apply the same logic to a human animal and you don't see what's behind the, the curtains, we don't see where, like, say, we are, we are buying people or, or using people for unfair labor, but we don't see it and we are not technically the oppressor, but we are paying for it. Does that make it morally right for, of us to do so? Does it make us of a less oppressor than the one who's uh, giving us the product? Um, I guess I guess not, but I think it's 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 uh, you simplify it so much too much if if you say it in that way, you know. And I thought this interview was supposed to be about the. Uh, Black lives. Now I think it shifted more to uh, to to be. To I mean, it, we we see we we look at it from oppression, right? I I I thought it was supposed to be about the uh, Black Lives Matter, but now we're, we're talking more about. Uh, trying to get humans just more empathetic. I I, I general, get. I, it's I, about empathy. I, I yeah. And we're trying to say, okay, yes. I I get your point. And if you're if you're I, vegan, it's it's impossible to be racist, because you're you're. Um, Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I. I, I, I don't I don't know if that has been because uh, your your com your uh, your compassion your circle of compassion is so much wider because you're not only looking at your fellow humans as equals yeah is this yeah so 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 vegan and 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 being an equal believer or like a human rights activist is the same so it's not about veganism it's about it's about equality. Oh, I, 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 I get your point because, I mean, if we want to respect life, then we have to respect all lives. And I, I agree with you on that. But you also, I think, I mean, the whole um, veganism now is also become like a trend. You know, I, I, I think there's a lot of people who start eating plants, plant-based diet, maybe not necessarily because of how, you know, compassionate they feel about it, but it, it, it becomes strange. Same with this. Same with this. Have you have you seen everyone who posts the the black picture on social media? Yeah, I know. How many of them do you think are for real about that? Also, I'll say this sign original. Love yeah. it. Some people just printing signs out. It's good. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just printing signs out. And you just don't see the love behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But for me, I mean, what what is important is, I mean, if not everyone that is here is very um, compassionate about it, at least people are out here, you know and taking a stand against something. You know, you, you don't always have to be uh, completely, um, or let's say 100%, uh, I don't so know. So sometimes it's good to follow a trend for the right reasons. Is that what you're saying? I mean, if, if it's for the right thing, then yes. But I mean, in the end, it has to do with, with you, the person. You know, what, what do you want from it? I mean, you can follow a trend, which is a good trend. But at the, at the end of it, you have, you, you have to do it because you feel it's something that is good for you and the benefit that you get from it. This, this is what is important because, I mean, you can try to put up a show out there, but in the end, you have to, you have to live with it with your conscience. You have to. So it's not about coming out here and saying Black Lives Matter and you don't uh, feel completely right about it, but it's what you feel inside. Because you have to live with your conscience. So maybe you might think, you know, you're putting out a show, but inside you, you answer to yourself. So even if you follow a trend, I mean, you want maybe, you know, because sometimes um, people do stuff because they want to be accepted. You know, pe people want to be part of the group. You know, they, 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 want, they, they don't want to 
be the weird guy who is different. So they just do what other people do, you know, peer pressure. You see that a lot with teenagers and stuff like that. But you would always have to, I mean, individually know what you want from what you're following. And, 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 and this is what I think is important. It's not about, you know, taking a stand against something where inside you, you're divided about it. But if you're really, really deep down inside you, you know, then you don't even have a point at even coming out here, you know? I mean, I specifically, I came out here because of my daughter, because she, she wanted to come out. But I think that, you know, with the problems that black people have been going through for over 500 years, it's a psychological and it's a mental problem. So we got to change it from inside. Like, 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 like the way I was talking about the energy that controls everything, we have to tap into this energy. And I mean, I started learning these things, I mean, uh, a few years back, you know, online. You know, people giving out messages and I listen to these messages and, you know, it touches my heart, you know, and it goes straight into my mind and I can feel it's right. You know, I don't have to go out there and do a lot of research, but sometimes, you know, I listen to podcasts, you know, like you guys have and, you know, people say stuff and you can just feel it because it's the same energy, you know, so... You can, you can hear the truth yes, when you hear it. Yes, exactly. You know, the truth is the only one. People try, they can try to, you know, hide the truth. They can try to say anything, but the truth is only one and it will always remain one. And it's inside you, you know, no matter what people, they can try to, you know, brainwash you and all that. But inside you, you know, like Bob Mali said, the feeling is a one drop, you know. And, and when you hear it and it's right, your inner being connects to it, you know. And uh, I mean, this is something that I... I have come to be in tune with. I I was never in tune with this, but with the more and more positive messages I hear, the more this spirit inside me awakens every day. Mm. You know, and for me, it's, it's a nice feeling. You know, the next step would be going vegan. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife my, my wife is vegan. Yeah, yeah, and, and nice. And I, I have been vegan for some time. And like I said, you know, it has to do with the discipline. I mean, I. Uh, it has, it has to do with but it. You don't, you, don't, you don't like the vegan food? I do. He loves it. But I cook it. He has to eat the Ghanaian food. <laughs> 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 That's mama love right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate Thank it. You too. What are you here for today? Yeah, like I said, I'm here because um, I'm getting tired for my brother, my sister, and our grandparents, our grandparents, grandparents, that um, our color would have been... Uh, putting down for many years, they've been killed by police, our protect, that they can protect us, but they took us as a criminal, they took us as a bad people because of our, our color. Okay, so uh, what can be done um, to stop that happening? Do, what's the, um, we need, the outcome, what can be we, done? We need the justice to stand on us. We need the justice to work for real, not just to choose one color to another. And then if you see it, it's always us, we've been killed in a different way so the how this doesn't do nothing about it okay so how do we go about that how would that be implemented would that mean more police training or how would we do it i think all people we need to stand up together as we do now to stand to show the world to show to show the justice the government which they are, are there for us do you think they're listening i don't think they're listening because they are there for their own do you think they listen when there's just people chanting in the streets and they've got signs up? Do you think that has an effect? You, or do you think the only people listening today is people who are already for the cause? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense because the government, I know now, they're sitting home watching us live and stuff like that. But um, I don't think it's going to change anything. But uh, so long we keep moving as one, one day is going to change. One day is going to come true. You know, we have a dream about it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what other questions have I got for you? I've had a mental block. <laughs> Hit me, Saru. It's his first day in Germany. It's my first day. Okay. I'm normally that guy. All right. Hit me one. Give me a, a question. Are you vegan? Vegan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> vegan. Are you vegan? Yeah, vegan or that. Uh, you don't eat meat? No, no, no. You eat meat? I, I'm, ve I'm vegan. Yeah, yeah, I eat meat. I eat meat. Yeah, I'm not a vegan. I'm not a vegan. Yeah, no. So do you think, like, um, it's a good correlation between, like, vegans and non-racists there is is a personality life because everybody can choose to be a vegan or not a big vegan it's not about racism that that's a 
racism is something negative who so I, I against, if you are you are vegan I'm not I don't care about it yeah, so I, I see I don't care about it. but I see yeah. vegan people as being more empathetic because they care about the animals so if they care about the animals they must care about humans do you understand what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think it's actually like a good stepping stone <laughs> for the world to find love yeah, as, as we know, that, that's, that question is a little bit complicated on me because the animal they've been created by God, you know, and then they've been created as food, you know, and the plant is there as, as food. So if we don't eat... So you eat, don't think animals... Eh? You don't think animals suffer? You don't think they no, have feelings? I think they're fair. That's why people, they have a family. But do you understand if, if we changed our perspective, oh, animals have feelings... We'd be more empathetic towards everything, even the planet. Don't you think then racism would just vanish? No, I think racism with the <laughs> with that question. I don't think racism is gonna be, it'll never be end. Actually, if we go and think about another planet or something like that, let's think first human be. Let's think about us because we are the one who can change everything. See, I would disagree. I think if we start to look at everything and realize we're being shit to the world, we're being shit to planet. You see somebody who respects you, opens the door for you, they're probably much more nicer to their family. You understand? Everything has a knock-on effect. I don't agree that we should just be looking at one area. I think humans, as a species, we need to grow and develop. Yeah, yeah true, true about that. True, true about that. <laughs> change your mind. You can now be vegan, yeah? I can be a vegan. I can be whatever I can be, but it's up to me, bro. Cheers, bro. Cheers, I'm falling over. Cheers, yeah, well, thank you, eh? Right, so uh, um, you are not at the uh, at the at the uh, demonstration right yep. now. Uh, how how is that? Uh, well, I chose not to. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that makes sense. Uh, what do what do you make of it? I, I've heard you you were there before, right? And yeah, you saw it. I actually. Yeah. So, what I make of it? Well, I guess there's a uh, negatives and pluses of anything, but uh, in a democratic sense, it's good that people congregate. congregate congregate and express their opinions it gives a sense of participation and then you can change things maybe it raises awareness of racial discrimination which is good maybe it's not the country where it's needed the most at this point it maybe shows sympathy for other societies where they need it which again can be picked up and be positive but it's also happening during the corona crisis and people are not being disciplined so you have maybe something positive happening for society but in the same process also a lack of sense of society and respecting the, the corona rules yeah it's so it's, it's, it's it, two oppositional directions at the same time yeah it's funny you mentioned that you also see how people are basically at least what i see on instagram on, yeah. on social media people are picking up that we are now posting these black pictures everyone yeah. so we're just all gonna do this thing now and and we are actually gonna like even surpass the fact that uh, the corona is still on and we are doing a gathering of half a million people Yep, this is the thing. So you, you're trying to demonstrate some sort of social awareness, collective awareness, trying to benefit the collective by harming it. It's not exactly coherent, I think. Maybe there's lack of thought there, but sometimes there are in these kind of sentimental collective expressions. On top of that, shouldn't it be all lives matter? Speaking of that, like, do you think that like that should also be applied to animal rights? Ooh, wow. I think uh, that's a very complex discussion because... Are animals all the same again? Do do we know how sentient animals are? And so, so is us not knowing that a reason to be oppressive and uh, and take their uh, freedom away from I them? It's a reason definitely to seek knowledge always and then discuss as as we gain more knowledge on the basis of our knowledge. But we should admit that we lack knowledge. I think that would be the important step of anything, basically, seeking knowledge and discussing on a basis of knowledge instead of discussing on a basis of of a sense of drama or emergency or panic right so so what proof would you like to see that cows for example have enough pain in their How brain can we prove at this point because we're always gaining more ability to even humans it's difficult in terms of neurology knowing exactly how we perceive things or even like what is in behind why we feel we feel express what we do so when are we ever going to reach that step with animals it's a good question should we wait for a final proof or act when we have partial proof or think i don't know but acting without any sort of proof or knowledge is also maybe. I saw a picture of of no, of, of, a, of, of a black guy. He held up a pig's head. Yeah. Like he had actually dismantled a Again, pig's head. Of like the opposite, opposite, trying to create a positive change by maybe doing something which is negative. But again, me subjectively thinking that doesn't make that his opinion, and I don't have a right to objectively claim that it's, it's right or wrong what he's doing. But I do think that 
you could criticize certain elements of what they're doing, the corona thing, maybe using animals as part of the demonstration, while trying to do good, are they harming? Maybe. Let's see if the, it spikes, the coronavirus spikes next coming days. All right, yeah, could be fun. All right, thank you, ver thank you very much. All right, yeah. it was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, good. Thanks for that. Victor. Victor. Uh, Astrid. Sorry? Astrid. Astrid. Oh, cool. Nice. Danish. Are you both Danish? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Nice. I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. Right then, so, my name's Joe. That's rude, Hi, isn't Joe. it? Hi, Joe. <laughs> uh, we've got the podcast called The Freeway Podcast, and we're here today to talk about what's going on here, to educate. And I feel like, for me, the reason I want to talk about it is because I'm white. I wanted to be a bit more informed and then see where it's going. We watched the George Floyd video, but then, yeah, we wanted to know more. So, why are you guys here? Well, actually, <laughs> we were just on our way, and we knew it was here, so we just stopped by, and uh, now we stayed to... Yeah, show our support, the same as you. Oh, I nice. think we also saw the video online and were a bit horrified. So Yeah, it's horrific, man. Yeah. So those guys who did it to George Floyd, yeah. they're in uh, jail now, yeah? What is now the intention right, of this? What, is it to just create more awareness? I don't know. What do you think? I think so. I mean, I'm not sure how big of a problem the police, police brutality issue is oh, in yeah. Denmark. But I think the whole systemic racism also exists here. Is it here? So yeah. I think so. I mean, it's hard to say for a guy like me, but I, I mean, it seems so, right? So uh, I think it's a good thing to show support for. And I think the whole Black Lives Matter movement is not just for George Floyd, but also for, you know, everyone else that's been abused or held that's, back and so on. That's a really different view that we had. Some people ask good, man. It's nice. Uh, why was it done outside the U.S. Embassy? Well... I what think in think the U.S. Like you could do it in front of a, any random police station. And here in Denmark, we don't have a concrete case to point at. Okay. So you can say, well, it's a problem in the U.S., so we're going to use them as a, a, a place guy, to gather. He's got some good knowledge, mate. you got <laughs> some knowledge, speak. mate. <laughs> <laughs> can we have a th third person on the podcast? <laughs> How are you on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Sundays? <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I had some other questions, but then I kind of dropped them on the way here in the crowd. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I think you've hit a lot there. Is there anything... Okay, yeah. Police in Denmark, they get three years training, yeah? I think it's two. But two yeah. years? Yeah, I think so. And they concentrate a lot on the uh, psychoanalysis, correct? Of the cops. I'm not sure, but I think the whole de-escalation thing is much more important here. I don't know if you saw the video in Aarhus yesterday. There was a guy who got shot in the leg. Really? Robo there's, there's, or real? The, there's this guy... No, it's real. There's this guy uh, called uh, Rasmus Pelodan. He's this oh, really? uh, Danish right-wing politician you know him and Rasmus, yeah. he's like a really uh, the most right-wing politician we have and he has these uh, demonstrations where he burns the Quran to provoke uh, a response and yesterday a guy showed up with a knife and the cops had to sort of uh, detain him or whatever and they're yelling at him for you know a minute or two before they and they warn him say we're gonna shoot you in the lake now because mm -hmm. he's not dropping okay yeah. and they shoot him in the leg and it, it was so very that's better than what well, American cops do, or it was just a showcase to say that in the U.S. you see them, you know, they shoot on sight straight sometimes, okay, yeah. straight up. This guy has like an ample opportunity to stop, and he's surrounded, and they tell him, "We're going to do this now. We're going to shoot you in the leg if you don't drop the knife." And that's a perfect so, example for my next question, which would be, "What like things are, are going to be achieved from doing this?" And like what you just said, like I'm going to be more aware of like maybe how Danish cops do things. I think in Denmark. I don't think it, this is going to help anything with the police brutality because I don't think the police brutality in Denmark is that much of an issue. I think this is going to, this is more to show the support for the global movement okay. in the U.S. So the U.S. demonstrations can see we're getting support all over, not just from Minneapolis and so on. Cool. Uh, so I, I think the goal here is to show that we also have racism in Denmark, but to, you know, show support in the U.S. Yeah. Cool, man. Did you say something? One minute. One minute left. Oh, I've run a timer. No, we've got a timer, mate. He never told me that before, you know. <laughs> so what's I, your uh, take on this? Um, I feel a bit anxious. Are you from uh, England? Or? Yeah, I'm from England. How's the issue over there? They don't have guns to the police either, right? No, no, no. they don't. We are, well, actually, we uh, have put, uh, police that are like this big, this big, this big. Yeah. Danish police are a bit more militant looking. And I'm not yeah. sure if that's good or bad, because I think like the American cops look very militant. Our cops yeah. are just like this. Lalo, yellow flash, flashing clothing yeah, on yeah. you see where they are you can talk no to threat. Them stuff. yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe this should be focused more on police policing or is that what you say this uh, 
I think in Denmark the policing isn't that much of an issue. I, but do you see these messages? Why I've, uh, you said, why am I here? I feel a bit anxious. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't really know what I can say or can't say, apart from on a mic, but not in front of people. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Um, I think it's hard as a, as a white privileged male to be able to navigate the waters. I mean, as long as you know that racism is bad and try to educate yourself, I think you can't really... Of course, you're going to make mistakes along the way. And this, I mean, it's hard yeah. to have a... I think it's hard to have a concrete... Uh, like take on it, mm -hmm. you know, because I've never experienced police brutality or uh, racism in my life, but I understand that other people uh, feel it. So it's it's like I don't understand you, but I understand that I don't understand it. Does that make sense? Uh like, yeah. But I like to try and understand things, and I think like so Martin Luther King, the way he went about his process, uh, protests, process. Yeah, he uh, he had a uh, an end goal. Um, very clearly put out and that's what I'm trying to find out what is like what do they want to see imp implemented because uh, at the moment it's just well, I think here I mean most people I guess that are here I can only speak for myself but I I so think they hope that uh, I hope that what does that sign mean so much wrong so little purple what does that mean like <laughs> Europe is racist yeah. okay can we learn from that yeah. Black Lives Matter this is, I mean this I don't is, know if you were I feel here, like here a lot earlier. of people are very just following a crowd I see this printouts of uh Black Lives Matter. I yeah. think like they should be inventive and bring their opinion instead of just repeating opinions because this is just going to dilute the whole situation. It's I not going to come. I agree. I think, oh, you think everyone can have their own opinion, but uh, right now the this is a demonstration for Black Lives Matter. So if they start to bring other issues, it's. I mean, there well, are other issues, issues, but more like specifics. Like I, mean, this. I think everyone here agrees that if they say Black Lives Matter, it's they're against racism. So I think that's the whole. Okay. Is that a minute? <laughs> Boom. Thank you so much, guys. That was really good. All right. Well, it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So you're, uh, you're processing for Palestine, I guess, yeah? Yeah, not, not for Palestine, but we are, have the same, pro the same goal, the same problem, that we are looking for justice also and peace. And uh, like the, the, the black people in the USA. And uh, exactly, but in Palestine, the, the Israeli soldiers, the occupy, occupation soldiers, they're killing white and black Palestinians, uh, so they don't see the, any distinguish between them, uh, children or old people. And they take the land and they destroy the trees, olive olive tree. So the many things happening in Palestine, uh, we want to focus on in this demonstration. All right, so so it, I guess it's the, the same oppression that applies to black people, the same oppression applies to, yes. to Palestinian people. Yes, exactly, because uh, every day many young people get killed, the innocent people, and uh, of course the world not, not talks too much about it. But now in the same day, uh, George uh, got uh, killed by the American police, uh, and uh, we have in uh, in what they call it uh, in handicap uh, young man. He was killed because they thought maybe he had a knife. He didn't have any knife, and he was going to school. And uh, that's why we are on the same day, so I can see see the same the same story here and there. I mean, uh, and no one talk about it. Uh, it's just happening. That's all. And you can protest. You can say what you like, and uh, go to the United Nations or to human rights and uh, protest. But this is not helping uh, to stop this uh, violence against the Palestinians in, in the West Bank and Gaza and all Palestine. Why, why do you think this is? Like, why do you think that this uh, oppression has been going on for so long? Like, I think you could say it's, it's one of the, the one has, that has been going on for the longest time, right? Yeah, because you know that uh, if we start like this, the, the American uh, White House, they, they support all the Israeli and the Israeli lobby in the USA, they, they super controlling the USA, I mean the White House. That's why... Um, Everything the, the Israeli soldiers they do anything they say is just their self-defense and whatever it is is self-defense. But when you try to defend your house and uh, kill a senior soldier or a settler, so it's, it's crime or oh it's not good. You must talk about it. the attack. Talk about uh, with our president that stop these people. They are destroying the peace process. But, but all these trees every day, the Olivian tree, they've been destroyed and, and burned. And you know how many times, how many years it takes just to have this tree. I mean. Uh, Getting some olive, it takes maybe 20 or 30 years, and they destroy it in one minute. So all the things it happens in Palestine, but uh, the, the world they are focusing on. Oh, many things happen in this world, in Libya, in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, whatever, in Africa. So, but we want to, we would like to see to, to have some focus on Palestinian uh, the, uh, issue. Would you say it's like one of the most neglected forms of uh, oppression that we have in this world right now? 
Yeah, yeah. We have we have, we have in, 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 in world now it's difficult to understand because uh, when the Trump come to, to the power, I mean, you can see he doesn't care about human life. He cares about money, about oil. Uh, it's about it's, it's like. But we still see like a lot of support for the black community right now. But but why don't we see that same support for Palestinian? We had, we had, of course, we had because uh, when you have this peace process and uh, you're going in, in education, the people think that everything is well, everything is good. Now they are talking. Of course, but if you think about go back to the first intifada, the stones intifada, and when the children just uh, throwing stones against the soldiers in Gaza and West Bank, we had a lot, thousands of people uh, protesting uh, against the Israeli. And if you think what happened in, 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 the, in 1982, well, under this uh, invasion in Lebanon, and uh, this massacre and Sabra Shatila, also many people in, uh, inside Israel, thousands in the protesting in the streets. So, but of course, this is uh, now because this is different. Different now because we talk about racism. Because in Denmark we have racism. Where people getting uh, racism. Yeah, of course, we have racism in Denmark. Uh, we have this Rasmus uh, Paludain, You know, it's come and burning the Quran uh, exactly and just provoking for Muslims. And if you touch him, it's against the law. I mean, and they will see what. Excuse me, he's doing every day, and uh, yeah, and it, it costs millions of um, crowns every day. You know, and people don't stop him because it's the law. I mean. So, but what is the law? I mean, uh, we don't. Uh, sometimes we don't understand these people. The law sometimes supporting this, uh, this uh, racist people in the name of this uh, free, free speech, you know. And this is. Uh, um, so, do you don't believe you don't believe in absolute freedom of speech? Then, no, no. Of course, now if I can stand here and say uh, any bad words about our other religions, other race. So of course uh, it's not no. What about respect? What about religion? I mean, if we yeah, we talk about religion, Islam or uh, Christianity or Judaism, all the people look at, uh, calling for uh, freedom and peace. And uh, but uh, how come? Uh, I, I mean, this is this is getting the, the young people think about their future in Denmark and their identity and how to live together. How can we live together if you don't like sit? They sit in the, in the microphone. Exactly, I'm a black. I born here. My name is Rasmus. But and you still, uh, you're not Danish. I agree with you. Like if we're talking man to man, then there is a common respect yes. between us. But when you build a society, when you have a system, you need some 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 rules, obviously, right? Yeah. So then, how would you make this limited? Like, because you don't want absolute freedom of speech, you want a limited freedom of speech. How do you practically implement that? It's difficult. Believe me, it's it's easy to say it. It's easy to just to find some plans to do. Like in USA, I mean, it doesn't matter if you are Latin American. Uh, we are black or uh, or white. I mean, uh, is there is there still still the, the white man? He's American. The, the, I mean, not white. He's not American, and he born there generations. But if when you go to war, so you, all the people must go and defend USA. Yeah, they are soldiers. They dying for USA. But they come back. They have no respect as soldiers. They dying for you. They say, I died for you. But he said you are uh, you, you are Afro American or you are from Latin American. You are Mexican. I mean, you can see and. The, so this, 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 this is, uh, I mean, to have equal, uh, uh, to have, uh, uh, to have equal rights. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, difficult to get this goal, because it's, it's always, if you go back to the, the old centuries, the religions, whatever, whatever, Bible, Islam, Judaism, always something said there are slaves and there is a master, and we still have it here. But I know, in this demonstration like this, I think it will be a very good sign to the world. Now it's enough. But I know it's enough, but it's still, I mean, individual, I mean, you can't say to risk a man not to be arrested here. It's my life. I'm rich, I don't like you. You believe, you believe that all humans are equal? I hope. I, I would like. But I don't, I, I don't say I don't believe it, but I say it's very difficult to, to get it, to get this goal. It's not easy. Because it's always war, I mean, uh, work. Um, uh, you know, of course, if, if, if we, some people are working and they pay taxes and they see another man, uh, they don't work. And they get money from the state. See why I'm working and pay taxes, and he do nothing. I mean, so it, it, I mean, racism is always you have many faces. It's not one face. Now we are talking about one face. I mean, racism in USA against the, the uh, Afro Americans. But there's a lot of racism. I mean, to get work, uh, you will not be hired because of your race, your name. The same in Denmark. I mean, if you are um, talking on the phone, you are Danish. And you say maybe you name it like Anas or Yunus, I mean Danish name. And when you got to the meeting, to the, the job meeting, you say, oh, oh, it's you. I mean, in, in, the, in, in the phone, you are Danish. You say, yeah, I'm Danish. I'm born here. But you are not Danish. Say, yeah, but uh, so if you don't have very high grade, better your Danish colleague, they will not hire you. They take sure. Chance. 
and this is this is a problem. So what about an Israeli and a Palestinian man? Are those two equal? No, no. It's, uh, Why not? Because because you know the Israeli they think they, they, again they come this ideology. I mean the Israeli they think the Palestine they are their land, Yehuda and Samaria, the promised land. You know, but if you go back to Palestine 1900, for example, then, uh, you know, and you can see there's uh, not too many Israelis, or you can not necessarily call it that time Jewish, uh, Arab Jewish, and they live uh, together with Palestinians, with my grandfather, and nothing happened. As soon they began this, uh, I mean, the, the, the English colony, and uh, they have agreement in, in, uh, in England and in Europe how to get the Jews to Palestine, and of course it's political, it's not about to want to help them. Yeah, but what do you think? I, I think I, I, I had some Jewish friends, I mean, I worked with them in theater because I'm a theater and we agreed one day, one day with a Jewish guy, Israeli, uh, he called Abiman and said, okay, so you don't say your land, my land, you say our land. So we agreed to call it our land because it's, uh, I, we, you can't get the Jews out of Palestine and the Jews, they, they can't get Palestinian uh, Muslim outside of Palestine, it's impossible. Should that be applied to the world as well? We shouldn't say my country, we should say our world? Our world, our world, of course our world. Because if you and this world then, does this belong to, uh, to the humans or to all animals or to God? Who does this world belong to? I mean, the, the world, I mean, God, God created this world uh, when they got Adam and Eva, he didn't say he's black or white. We said you have, you have two, two, a man and a wife, uh, I mean, they got, uh, we got us in this way. And there's no racism, but the reason come after a while, after, uh, you know, got more people, so people got to kill each other because of jealousy, because the woman, you can come like this, you know? And now if, it's, uh, if you are not, let's say, come from other country, oh, uh, I mean, this is, this will not stop, I know. But uh, if you do it like this, uh, and people hold together, I think that we will get a better world, I'm sure. Okay, cool, man. Thanks, thanks for that. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Uh, Denmark, I'm half Danish, half Italian. Oh, Italian, cool. So, just so people get an idea, what, why, why are you, what are we doing here today? Uh, we are protesting, uh, manifesting, more to say, like uh, the rights of black people, the rights of colored people. And uh, what I really like about what uh, Bali have been doing is like, she have put it down and she had that orders from the Black Lives Movement in the United States, like, put it down to local matters. Who's that? Was that the girl on stage? Yeah, the yeah. woman on stage, okay. yeah. She's, she's like the main person for Black Lives Matters in Denmark. Okay. Was she the... So there was an American and then a Danish one on stage? Yeah, the American is the main one because it's there that most people are being killed by cops. Yep. So most colored people are being killed by cops. But in Denmark, she has like moved their attention to... Um, we have a lot of um, refugee camps. And they have very, very bad conditions there. And there are also instances of, of police violence in Denmark. Not so much, luckily, but we still have them. So, And also people of color experience racism. So that's how she's trying to, to shape the movement here in Denmark. Okay, so how can you help uh, people like me um, to, yeah, to, uh, to understand better? Um, like I think actually there's a lot of um, information on the internet, so just go search Black Lives Matters and you can read. Uh, more specific, specific in Denmark, there's a lot of information about this, uh, this, those camps. So what specifically do you want to see change? Uh, I want to close all the refugee camps okay. because it's horrible conditions there and some people are there for unknown time and some people can't even go, go back because they know they have a death sentence, but the Danish politicians are trying to to appease the, the right-wing movement. So do you think uh, the Danish politicians are right now listening or do you think they're just sat at home and watching on the... They watch like a little five-minute clip on... I am an environmental activist for 10 years, so I know they... I don't know. Maybe they will see it if it's reached the evening news, you know? But so many people on the streets, it means something. It really means something. But even then on the evening news, like 30 seconds, it's so easy to disconnect, right? Yeah, I know. I know. It's... It takes time, you know. So for me, I would say like, you know, you say like people, keep, everyone I've spoken to say, go and research yourself. Uh, yeah. But it'd be nice to know like, if people could actually have a conversation about it. Like when I go up to someone and say, okay, can you help me out a bit? Like mm. something's going wrong. People are pissed. Mm. I can see that. Um, and I, I know like black people are being suppressed. Um, but my view is like Martin Luther King, he, uh, he had a plan. Mm. Um, and he had a peaceful protest and it was the civil rights of humans. It wasn't um, specific black. 
people, which it did in general help. I think somehow he was especially on the black matter. Was it? Know? Yeah, he was talking a lot about the structural racism, you know. For example, when they freed the slaves, they didn't get they didn't get any property at all, you know. So in in the United States, you have this like this dream of you can reach yourself with the bootstrap. It was like a quote from Martin Luther King that you should reach yourself with the bootstrap, but when they were released as slaves, they don't even have boots, you know. So it's been a long walk. So uh, why today is it come specifically? Out here, what is the? What is the official uh, parliament? That's very protest in Denmark. Okay, so it's for uh, imagery, so people see. Yeah, it's, it's symbolic, you know, so that the people are reclaiming the parliament somehow, you know. Yeah. Um, talk about veganism now. Hmm? Are you a vegan? No, not completely, but uh, I, eat, I eat mostly vegan. I'm you vegetarian. do? I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. Cool, man. So you like understand the enslavement of animals could maybe have a crossover with i find people who are vegan are, are uh, more empathetic uh, in general and i find if we push more enlightened. <laughs> exactly man yeah, i think that's that connects because uh, if you look into stuff you know you begin to understand how the meat industry is working you know and of course as we cannot have colored people being harassed because they they have life and they have a right to be here we cannot destroy other life you know yeah yeah i 100 agree um uh, it's, it's actually quite big in Denmark with the vegan movement, you know? And suddenly it just bloomed. It was quite interesting to see. But do you see the same thing I see as like, there's a lot of uh, fake vegans. There's a lot of people who post on social media, but then when they're around the family or they go out for a meal. And the same sort of mentality is here. Like you'll see people sharing the post, but they couldn't even today turn up. You know, I've been doing this for so long, so I'm just happy there's many people, you know. I'm happy there's many activists, because there is many activists okay. compared with 10 years ago when I started, you know. So it's nice to see, but yeah, it takes time, you know. And people in Denmark are very comfortable, you know. That's, that can be an issue. Yeah, that's the, it's a nice country, you know. You don't have, really have, you don't feel the pressure so much, you know. they have been a little bit during the corona, and that wakes some people up, but look at the UK, look at the US, you look at Africa, you look at... Yeah, basically any other country than people than countries from Scandinavia is much worse, you know. So there was a, like um, this Danish writer, Epiklöde Reich, he compared the the Danish um, society to the hobbits of the Lord of the Rings, you know. And somehow I see that's right, you know. It's comfortable, it's it's hugelit, it's com it's nice, you know. But now slowly, you know, the hobbits also wake awake in the in the the last part of Lord of the Rings. Not in the movie, you don't see that, but in the books, and that's. What I see now, but I also want to see it, you know. So I'm yeah, you can't just <laughs> you can't just ignore the evil Urukai in the distance. You no. gotta handle it because eventually that evil will eventually come to your doorstep. Yeah, and I think it's also quite like if you're talking about the metaphors of Lord of the Rings, I think that it has some really good, powerful metaphors because if you take the Ring of Power, you yourself become corrupted. And I, I think that like most people, even most politicians, when they start in politics, they're good people. You know, they have a dream, they want to do something. Yeah, hundred percent. They, they get corrupted, you know. The ancient uh, Americans, they used to uh, all the the wealthiest people of the tribe, the most hard working, driven people. Every year they'd have a party and they give away all their yeah, wealth yeah. because they they know they're they're wealthy ones. They know how to get that money back or the or gold or whatever they their currency was. Again next year, and I think like we can so learn from that it's the whole system you know we got to change the whole system we got to move away from this neoliberal liberal patriarchal uh, uh, capitalism you know we got to find something new you know the thing is that we don't know what it is so we're like kind of like making yeah. it on the way are you but ready for the revolution then? <laughs> 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 yeah okay cool man <laughs> right that, that was perfect yeah really good man have you asked a lot of people? yeah We've talked to quite a few, and we'll talk to the organizers after this. But now we, we just want to hear, hear the, the opinions of like the protesters. I, I believe that you weren't in the parade, right? Yeah. Uh, so what do we what do you make of all this? Um, I just think it's really important for everyone to come here and say what they mean and be a part of this because it's a, it's a, it's actually pretty important. All people need to be equal, and we don't. We don't want anyone to feel outside or left out and being treated differently because it doesn't it doesn't matter the color of our skin is what's inside and we are all the same inside. We're all 
We all Fri breed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. We all. <laughs> yeah, we all we all breed. We all bleed the, the same color. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so what about animals? Do they also bleed the same color as us? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they do. But should we then extend our moral uh, circle to animals as well? Or should is it exclusive to human animals? Mm. What do you guys think? You should, of course, you should treat every living creature uh, like right. You have to treat them right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We don't. We only have this one Earth and... And I just think we're fucking it up so badly because other people's opinions and their short minded I don't know. <laughs> it's just yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. So uh uh like cuz the, the main theme of today is oppression. Yeah. And uh what is interesting uh to us uh is that we we continue to oppress all other animals on earth basically. Yeah. And and the only ones we actually caring about is humans. No, isn't that ironic? Yeah. It is pretty ironic because they're living creatures as well as we are. So we need to treat, uh, treat the animals right and we need to make sure they that they live a good life and we just don't use it for the industry. Um, so you're against factory farming then? I am. I'm not I'm not a veg uh, vegetarian, but... Why not? Because it's, it's pretty hard not to eat meat, but I'm trying my best to... I'm trying my best to uh, not eat that much meat because I don't want the industry to get bigger and more successful. So, because in that way we are ruining the earth and the planet because meat production is not great. It's not good for the planet. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you just like the taste, I guess, of, of meat too much to, to let go of it? or Also the pro protein in the meat. The protein. So you don't believe that you can get protein uh, from plants? You can get, but it's, I mean, it, it's the same, but it's different also. Do you, do you know where protein comes from, like originally? No, actually not. I so, so actually protein comes from plants. Yeah. And then the animals, they eat the plants. And we get the protein from the meat. Yeah, so, so how inefficient is that? That we go all, all this uh, way around. That's stupid. Yeah, yeah so, so yeah, we can actually just eat plants and then... Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know because uh, a lot of my friends are vegetarian, um, but they eat a lot of other stuff as well to like comp supplement the. Yeah, they take B12, for yeah, example. Exactly, um, and I really want to do that as well. But I think I need to. I live with my family, and I need to. Though my family need to support me and my choice as well, um, and it's quite difficult when the whole family is not on the same area and doesn't mean the same um, because if I, l if I lived alone it would be a lot easier because it was only me I need to think about but every time they make dinner or something they don't make vegetarian like a supplement and um, so it's quite difficult I have tried to like make my family eat not eat meat but they're kind of against it not because they don't want to save the planet and not because they feel they no, do not feel sorry but for the animals but i think it's just easier to eat meat instead of take a lot of extra vitamins and such yeah 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 i can see that but for any progress to happen in this world we need to go against what the majority thinks is right just like with this movement if it wasn't for guys like martin luther king yeah. we would never be here today the black people would still be in chains because no one spoke up about it so we cannot use that as an excuse that our family, say, wouldn't support it or the majority or we would become unpopular or we would have less friends if we didn't do the right things. It's about finding what, what we believe is right to do. And, and I believe that's what this day is a symbol of, isn't it? It is. It is. And I think, I think in our hearts we know that we need to stop eating meat because of the production and because of the animals living. Um, but sometimes it's, it's difficult to change your whole routine and your li your living. Um, so I think we are slowly coming to the decision that we need to stop eating meat. Um, but it's a progress. So we're taking it, taking it step by step instead of just... So when you say we, uh, who are you referring to? I'm referring to all the people who believe that animal production or animal 
in general shouldn't be eaten. Um, I think there is a lot of people and human beings in Denmark who believe in that, but I just think that the only reason that they don't stop eating meat is because there it's quite difficult sometimes to stop. <laughs> Yeah, but it's the exact same thing with racism. Say you're in a group of friends and, and you you think racist jokes are funny and you don't like it, you, you feel it's wrong in your heart, but because there is this group pressure, you just keep doing it and you just hope that we, quotation mark, will come to a better place one day. But someone has to be the first one and say, hey, this is not all right. We have to change this shit. Even if it's on the, like, the, on the, after, for the price of my friendships, we still have to do the right things in life, yeah? That is very true, and we should all think about it more than we actually do because sometimes it happens when you say something and then afterwards you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that because it is a bit racist, but we don't really see it that much if it's just in the in small things. But if you see something like George Floyd, who's being suffocated, and that really set the whole situation in, uh, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you think about what you're saying a lot more. And you really, you can really see that all the small things you're saying that is racist, but you don't really notice it. You can really see that maybe you shouldn't do that as well, because it's just a small... Com- it's just a small thing that can grow into a bigger thing, like George Floyd, for example. Yeah. So because you saw that video, it became real to you, right? You were like, oh shit, this is actually happening. Did this guy get suffocated? You saw the whole video. So if we take another oppressed species, say cows, for example, would it help that you that you saw more footage of that instead of just seeing uh, you know, these Arla advertisements with happy cows on the grass fields? Because we know it's bullshit, right? That's true. Uh, also, you see some people are showing the videos and sharing them on social medias as well. But sometimes when you eat meat, for example, me, I feel sick watching it. But maybe I should because that could make me change my way of living. Uh, so maybe Yeah, it did for me. Like, I couldn't live with myself. After seeing, seeing those videos, I have a cat. I was like... Wait, I'm petting this cat and there's a steak on my plate. Which one is it? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's actually pretty true. So it's like talking about racism and then doing racist jokes with your friends. Yeah, that is very true. Also, if you think about it, some pe- I have a horse and some people eat horses, but I would never eat my own horse, for example. And when you see your pets like a dog or a cat or something, you wouldn't eat your pet, but you eat... You eat uh, cow or you eat a pig like it doesn't matter but actually they're pretty a pig is actually really smart and it's smarter than a dog but you don't think about it yeah have you seen what we do to them it's horrible yeah. isn't it yeah. it is really horrible they don't even when they're in their boxes at the factory they can't move and when they are having children a lot of those children or animal kids uh, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. they they get uh, they get crashed or suffocated by their own mother because there's not enough space or room for them to live in and so there is maybe like two out of eight uh, kids from the pigs that survive that and it's just horrible to think about but when you s- so you don't need bacon I assume <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, I do. Stop tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm thinking about stopping more and more because it is. It is really not good how the world are treating the animals, and it's just the same. It's not good that, for example, the U.S. are treating black people or people with another skin color bad and chasing them around and the police who doesn't even care about their life is lives um, and we we have that in Denmark as well I don't I'm not sure about the, how the police are managing the whole situation um, because I haven't seen directly that a black person is being treated differently 
uh, in Denmark, not with my own eyes, uh, but we have a lot of people in Denmark who doesn't believe that we should take um, refugees in and we shouldn't help them. And I'm, I'm, I'm sick by the thought that we we're not supposed that some people think that we're not supposed to help other people. Of course we should. They're the same. They're the same. We're all the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's some beautiful words. Uh, all right.